In this lecture, we'll be looking at the last two papers of the course, both of which involve your learning to work with sources and conduct research. We want to begin the research process by considering good topics. In an earlier video, you got the great advice to pick something you're interested in. The TED website is one place many of my students have found viable and interesting topics for this type of paper, so that's where I'm sending you to begin your research. Before I do, let's lay out some parameters of the research paper assignments. You'll be conducting three major assignments as part of your research project. The first one is the TED Talk analysis paper, in which you'll be doing an academic summary and analysis of a TED Talk of your choice. The second is an annotated bibliography, in which you'll record all the sources you read or consulted during your research, the MLA citation information, a database or web link, and your own short summary of what's in that source. We'll look at this in another video later, and I'll get you started at the end of this video. The last one, of course, is the research paper itself. The main thing to understand is that the research paper for this class is not an argument paper. Save that for English 102. You're not trying to persuade someone to agree with you on your position about an issue like abortion or gun control or climate change or income inequality. You're also not allowed to use a paper you previously submitted in another high school or college class. You're starting from scratch and going through this process to learn how to do it successfully later. Your book talks about research reports. This is the kind of paper you'll be writing for this class, one that informs your audience about a topic of interest to you and explains some unusual or lesser known ideas related to the topic. What you're not writing, though, is a Wikipedia entry or the kind of report that basically rehashes facts everyone knows or can easily Google. A good rule for this is, if there's a website devoted to basic information about your topic, chances are it's not going to be acceptable for a college paper. Not without some tweaking, anyway. Here's an example. Suppose you're interested in breast cancer. Maybe someone you know has it, or it runs in your family. If you just go with looking up symptoms, causes, and treatments, you don't really have a college paper, nor do you have anything of your own to really say. All of this information is on, yes, Wikipedia, or on any other number of general info websites. However, if you dig deeper into this topic, maybe you'll run into something that's a little off the beaten path. New treatments, scientific studies that shed surprising light on the disease's origins, ways survivors cope, how different charities raise money for research. Here's where the TED site can really help you. Looking for answers about side questions like these might lead you to a more focused and interesting and appropriate topic for a paper. You could also interview people diagnosed with the disease who have some relevant experience, say with support groups or how the disease has changed their relationship with their friends and families. We'll go later into more depth about topic selection, but for now make sure whatever topic you pick is one we can discuss logically and sensibly in the academic community. Topics that rely on evidence from anecdote like a single person's experience, or from paranormal explanations like I saw a ghost in my bedroom or aliens abducted me, or on religious faith like whether or not God exists or what the Bible or Quran or Torah says about a particular topic. None of these work really well for academic papers. With all this in mind, explore the TED site and see what you can find that might be interesting for your topic. You're spending the next eight modules on this, so you may as well find something that's interesting to you. Chances are, if you do, it'll be interesting to your instructor and to your classmates. Have fun! Finally, I did promise you this before you go. When you find the talk you want to write about for your second paper, you'll be expected to put it in your annotated bibliography as your first entry. That means you'll need to know how to cite this kind of source correctly in MLA style. As an aside here, you'll also want to pick something with an interactive transcript and over 10 minutes long, so you can get to the length required for this paper. You can see all this information here. I'm on the TED Talk site. Um, you can just browse these talks. You can look under topics to find things that you might be interested in. Um, you might search if you want to do that. I'm going to just scroll down here, and you can see for any of these talks, the length of it is on here. So this one's about 12 minutes. This is 11. Um, some of these are a little bit short. This one is under six minutes. That's definitely not going to work for a paper. I'm going to go ahead and pick one just at random here. And you can see that this one does have an interactive transcript. You can click on it and see it. And now you have the actual text of, of what he's going to say. And that should help you as you're writing your paper because you are expected to quote it in your paper at some point. Um, coming back here also, um, you can... 
You could use EasyBib or something like that for this, but I'm just going to show you how to do this by hand. So I'm going to go to my mail, and in Office 365, if you click these dot, um, boxes up here at the top, um, you can see all the different apps you have. I'm going to go into Word Online, and as it happens, I have a bib an annotated bibliography that I, um, kind of a sample one. And so I'm going to open it up here for you. Whenever you go back into these, you do need to remember that you have to edit the document. If you just try to type over here, it's not going to work. Um, you can edit in, in Word if you have it on your machine, or you can just edit it in Word online. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm opening it up here. This is my bibliography. I've got it titled, titled Annotated Bibliography. I've got it double spaced. This is basically the sort of format for this kind of a source. You've got the last name of the speaker, comma, first name, period. You've got the title in quotation marks with a period at the end there, and you will capitalize the parts of the title correctly. Um, you have the date that it aired. Um, I think I just have picked one at random here. It's March. Usually you will not have a day. You'll just have the date, um, the, the month and the year. So put those down like that. Um, the website is ted.com. Um, it's a web source, of course, so you'll put that in there. And then the date that you accessed it. And you can see I'm working on this the day after Christmas of 2015. For the TED Talk only, I would go ahead and put in the URL. So if I wanted to do this for real, let's go back to the one that we just had here. Um, his last name is Taylor, and his first name is Jason. His middle name is very interesting, and I hope I can spell it right. I'm going to come back here, and Taylor's his last name, so I'm going to put that there, comma. Jason, and then I have to go look at it again. Oh, there it is. It's up in my thing. Daycares, period. So that's his name. The title of the talk is An Underwater Art Museum Teeming with Life. And I'm going to go ahead and type that in as well. period, quotation mark. You notice the only thing, oh, I need to capitalize underwater. The only thing that I haven't capitalized here is the word with because it's um, a preposition. It's really short. We usually don't capitalize those. Um, but everything else is capitalized. What else do I need here? I need the date. It tells me this was filmed in October of 2015. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. OCT, period. 2015. I don't have a day and I don't worry about that. Um, this was on the TED.com site, period. Period's basically after everything. Um, it's a web source and it's the 26th of December, 2015, period. The other thing that I will, and then the other thing you would want to do is put the um, URL in angle brackets. So I'm going to go back over and get that. To get the URL, you just go to the website, um, go up here in the address bar, click it, and you can control C or on a Mac it would be command C, and that will copy everything that's there in blue for you. Go back over here, um, control V or command V on a Mac will paste it. So there I go. And I'm going to take out the transcript stuff, so all it is is the teeming with life bit. I'm going to end it right there and put a period. Now, when you get to the place where you want to put this in an actual works cited page, the last step for you is going to be to highlight this and change it to hanging indent. And you do that by going to up here to paragraph, to line spacing, click it, go to line spacing options, and you see one of the th options you have here is special. Right now it says none, but if I change this, I can change it to hanging. I'm going to do that, click OK, and now you see everything jumps over on the first line. This is one of the things that you have to do um, for a work cited page to make it be correct. Um, I hope this has been helpful, and please let your instructor know if you have any questions. Thanks very much for watching.